Airbus Group has had a dream run in the Indian aviation space. Its first engagement with the country started way back in 1962, when the forerunner to Airbus helicopters worked with Hindustan Aeronautics Limited. It made its foray into the civilian aerospace market when in 1976, Indian Airlines took the delivery of its first Airbus A300. The company is now getting ready to expand its operations in India and over the next 30 minutes, we will take you through Airbus Group's plans of soaring high in the Indian skies. In the civilian space, Airbus has over 70% market share. Currently, there are 200 aircraft that are being flown by Indian Airlines. The OEM also has deep interest in defense projects. And hence, to bring efficiency, Airbus has brought all its India operations under one roof. So we decided to ask the India head if the environment in India is more conducive for Airbus today. I do feel that... Uh... Uh, the government mm -hmm. uh, that I've been in contact with, the, the, the members of government, and mm -hmm. let's say your Minister of Defense, whom we've seen a lot around here right. these days, right. very open to dialogue, mm -hmm. very concerned about lifting up the impediments that stand in the way of uh, doing business in India. Mm -hmm. So in terms of everything, the ease of doing business thing that people talk about, mm -hmm. I think we see real improvements. The optimism has been aided by the Make in India campaign that was launched in September 2014. But the aerospace major maintains that it already sources heavily from India and has a strong industrial footprint. Current sourcing from India stands at $500 million. In fact, over the past decade, sourcing from India has increased by 16 times from areas like engineering, aerostructures, materials, cabins and even IT. Airbus currently sources from 45 Indian companies and this supports over 6,000 jobs in the country. These include Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, which makes 50% of the A320 forward passenger doors, Dynamatic Technologies, which is a single source supplier for flap track beams for the A320 and the A330, Mahindra Aerospace, which supplies over 1 million aerospace components to Airbus subsidiary premium Aerotech. Not only that, Airbus sources from at least three Tata Group companies as well. For example, Tata Advanced Materials supplies composite parts for the A320 and A350XWB aircrafts. Tata Advanced Systems will supply refueling ports for A330 multi-role tanker transport aircraft. And Tata Manufacturing Solutions has partnered with RUAG Aerostructures to supply over 500 different machine parts for the A320. We make it in India. Why do we make it in India? Mm -hmm. We make it in India because we buy from India. And what we buy from India, we make in India. The nature of our company is that we buy a lot from people and mm -hmm. all that falls into our planes in the end. Mm -hmm. In India, we've been buying about 500, uh, actually last year, we bought more than $500 million worth mm -hmm. of uh, engineering services, materials, equipment, etc. from India. We're on a growing trend in that respect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, and so I believe this is going to grow much further but this is also what gives us I call it intimacy to a certain extent with the Indian suppliers that are going to be part of that ecosystem after the Modi government released the Make in India campaign the Airbus group tweaks its India plans in fact Make in India is part of Airbus group's corporate strategy which means that it will engage deeply with Indian MSMEs Make in India is central to what we do mm -hmm. and what that means is that not only means partnering with the big houses mm -hmm. like the Tatas and Mahindras in India but also includes development of micro, small and medium scale enterprises to support the delivery of uh, an, e an ecosystem, development of an ecosystem that will enable us to deliver the entire aircraft. Right. Uh, that's what we call as our Make in India strategy mm -hmm. which also means sustainable growth mm -hmm. because we believe that uh, innovation and real efficiencies are also driven by, uh, by making MSMEs as part of our ecosystem. The Airbus Group has set its sights on several defense projects in India. On its part, the Defense Ministry has released a new defense procurement policy that promotes indigenous development and innovation in the defense space. The policy makes it clear that Indian companies that innovate and manufacture will be given a priority in defense orders. The policy also seeks to boost MSME participation in the defense space. So what does the new defense procurement policy mean for the Airbus Group? 
For Airbus Group in India, it's very positive, as it will be for many foreign OEMs all the same. Uh, first, it's a TPP that comes with uh, a substantial preamble, and I think it's a very intelligent thing they did, mm -hmm. because they set the spirit of the text before they put the details of the text, mm -hmm. and that will allow people to regularly go back to the spirit of the text. Uh -huh. What I like in it is the insistence on transparency and speed. Mm -hmm. That will make the business environment less uncertain for us. Uh -huh. That is very good. I like the focus on MSMEs, the small uh, and the medium-sized companies, because I think that in an industrial ecosystem, they are essential. Mm -hmm. From our experience back home, I know that it's very often from them that we see ambition, initiative, mm -hmm. innovation. It comes from MSMEs. While Airbus is gungo about the new defense procurement policy, the same cannot be said about other defense production related norms. The group has been vocal about the limitations of the FDI cap of 49%. It believes that a foreign investment cap comes in the way of foreign OEMs wanting to set up base in India. There's plenty of domains in which they will have to tackle uh, bigger and smaller details. Mm -hmm. uh, they're putting a lot of thinking into it and you mm -hmm. know there's been the uh, uh, the, uh, the AFRI committee report, for instance, that yes. we haven't seen but been told about uh, recently. Mm -hmm. uh, you can tell that the thinking is going on. Mm -hmm. The new DPP is clearly an example of that. Uh, now, uh, what else can they do? It's in the details that right. the devil will yeah. resign. Absolutely. Right? And when I say the details, they can be anything. Like you've seen, I've taken positions on the level of foreign direct investment that would be allowed for foreigners. Mm -hmm. I strongly believe that setting a cap on foreign direct investment, or even if it's a soft cap, does not make much sense because companies like ours, when they invest, mm -hmm. they invest much more than just money. Right. They invest efforts. They invest... Uh, painstaking work to find and select the right suppliers, qualify them, certify mm -hmm. them, turn them into single source suppliers, which means risk taking for us. When we provide technology, we take risk, and it is a form of investment. When we set up in this country a plant that will actually manufacture a part of our product line, mm -hmm. uh, of our worldwide product line to serve India and to serve the world, and we give the keys to that plan to a joint venture, we need to have some level of control. So on FDI, I have this message that I think there should be a further liberalization going forward with no you know, reviewing of what is right level, etc. There's plenty of other uh, fields. People will talk about what can be done in terms of government investment for the skilling of the people. It's going to be very important in this industry to ramp up. There's what can be done on the tax side to simplify some of the imports that allow the Indian suppliers to become part of the uh, global supply chain, mm -hmm. etc. The list is endless, mm -hmm. but, you know, it's a one step at a time type of thing, and I think they are addressing the most essential things right now. So I really give credit to your government. On that note, we will take a short break. On the other side, Airbus Group's Make in India plans. Stay tuned. Thank you.